Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Uh, folks, today we, we got another one. We got another one. Uh, an here we go. Another new Bayo watch. There you go, baby. All right, so uh, you guys know I've been working with Nubeo now for quite some time. More importantly, Dartmouth Brands, they are the parent company, uh, if I'm using that term correctly, um, uh, in charge of Nubeo, or they own Nubeo. Uh, there's many other brands under Dartmouth, uh, Ballast being one of them, RGMT, another amazing brand. Uh, so I'm very fortunate that this company wanted to work with me, and this is fantastic, because nothing I love more than adding watches to my collection, right? It's a sick little addiction. I have where uh, I just ne it never stops, right? So Nubeo is a great brand, and this has got to tell you, I've worked with hundreds of different brands, and I don't know how many watch brands. Uh, I I have a really great understanding of what you get for your money, and I'll tell you the the quality coming out of these companies is it, just amazing, you know. Uh, and when people tell you that, oh man, you know, uh, and I always like to go back to luxury brands. I'm sorry, go compare brands like this to your super high-end luxury brands. You're not going to see much of a difference, you know. Uh, again, remember those super high-end luxury brands, don't let, don't get it twisted. Don't let these snobs fool you. It's all about microscopic differences, on-paper differences, things that don't matter in the real world. What really matters, and again, I talk about check boxes, is what kind of movement does it have? What's the crystal, and most importantly, what is the watch made out of? And again, you know, the tolerances, of course, how a company puts something together, you know, is it cheaply assembled? Does it feel cheap and flimsy? And generally, if you, t if you, if you focus on those three items, those three check boxes when shopping for a watch, you're, you're not going to be disappointed. You're just not. So despite what any of these delusional folks tell you, okay? So Nubeo, uh, originally when I order, when I, when not order, but when I uh, discovered the brand, I saw them online, they reached out, and again, I originally thought Nubeo was just like a um, sort of an astral space-themed company. Um, I'd say it's kind of like a I think you've had to pick two major themes with this company. Uh, you know, they're not military inspired like their RGMT line or their ballast line, which is more of like, you know, naval ship inspired, right? Uh, this company, this brand is a little bit, I'd say a little bit, um, I don't want to use the word confused, but they're it's kind of a hybrid brand, right? They I think they kind of start off with maybe uh, focusing on space exploration, space related stuff, and then they came out with some of the um, um, other ones which are more dive related. So um, you know, either way, I love themed watches, and I think it's pretty cool that they're doing stuff with space. And of course, you know the ocean. I love the ocean, so um, you know anything dive related, I'm I'm a fan of. You know, uh, so uh, now this one is a dive uh, themed watch. This is called their Ventana, and so the Ventana is. I'm reading this right off their website, which, as I tell you in every video, just click the link in the description. See where, I'll put where you can get it for the best price. And of course, always go to the manufacturer and read what they have to say about the watch. Uh, so, Ventana Remote Operating Vehicle. Uh, it's an, it says ROV is perhaps one of the most prolific and enduring submersibles in operation. Uh, it says here, with a record of over 4,100 dives, ROV Ventana is by far the most experienced and enduring scientific rove in the world. And it just, re it just tells you a little bit about that operate that vehicle uh, and, um, you know, where the, I guess, the inspiration comes from this particular watch. Now, again, one thing I want to, you know, I'm always honest when I review watches. I'll tell you the quality. If you guys trust me already, if you guys, have, I get it every day. I got it. I, I, you're the only reason I bought an Invicta watch. You're the only reason I bought the Boulevard. You're the only reason I got the the uh, Aragon. I'm telling you, if you get the Nubeo, you're going to love the brand, for one. I, I wholeheartedly can tell you you're not going to be disappointed. But I have to give my honest negative part of this particular brand and lots of brands for that matter i love the theme stuff right i love the theme behind each piece it's a story uh us watch collectors who love again and i don't mean when somebody says oh, oh i'm a click watches how many got three yeah it's a start right but a lot of times guys who they, that's not a collection we know what collectors are like we need more it's just we never stop looking it's an addiction we just, it, long, as it doesn't, long as you're not losing your home over it, right? But the cool thing about affordable stuff like this is that you can afford to have many, you know? When I look at luxury brands, the guy's like, oh, I got a Rolex and I got a Omega. I'm like, wow, that's really exciting, you know? That's just, no, you just chose the two expensive watches and that's what you have. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not a collection. Collectors 
want more, more, more. It never ends. And so with brands like this, I love it when I'm wearing stuff, which I'm wearing it now. I love when people are like, what are you wearing today? Or, or friends are like, what do you got on today? My dad, what, what we got on the wrist today? It's really fun for me to explain, uh, talk about the watch, take it off, show it. I really enjoy it, you know? And I love it when it has a story like this. It's not just a dive watch. It's the Ventana dive watch. Uh, so uh, now here's the downside. What I would like to see from this company is when they, they have a thought process in making each model, right? Whereas Invicta, you know, they have amazing watches too, right? But they generally will create a watch and it's just they create it with a name and that's kind of the end of it. There's not really a story behind it. There's not really, I, I think, a lot of times an inspiration behind it. I don't mean all Invictas. Don't come at me, Invicta guys. You know, uh... You know, but I think like when I look at a Subaqua, yeah, it's a dive watch. Yep, that's kind of where the story ends, right? With this, it's there's a story, a, a, a inspiration behind the watch. And what I would like to see is them reference what the inspiration is on the watch. So let me just take this off here. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to tell you guys the basics on, uh, you know, the, the check boxes, the specs. And uh, again, check it out in the links in the description. So here it is. Very clean, sexy watch. Now, I chose the black. It is available in several different color variations. Let me just click back here, and I'll tell you what they are. You have the Ops Black. That's what this one is. You have the uh, the Cadmium Green, the Garnet Red, and I think there's... That's it. So, three different variations. I thought there was a blue in there. All right. So, uh, and the red one's pretty cool. It's got the black and red bezel. Um, I almost chose that one stainless steel case. Again, these are all 316 stainless steel. This has got a black plating though. Um, let me just go to, let's get with it. Let's get, let's knock the basics out of the way right now before I come back to the inspiration. Japanese automatic. It's another gripe. We all know, most likely, this is a Seiko NH35. They either use NH35s or Miotas I've seen in, in most of their watches. Again, Nubeo, please add this to your listings because that is a time-tested movement. When you have an NH version, whether it be 35, 36, 38, whatever it may be, when you have that, watch collectors, micro-brand collectors, guys who like watches in this price range, they, they they trust that. You know, when I look at this, I see Japanese automatic three hand with date. I don't know what this is if I'm interested in buying this watch. Unless you find my video and you've come through this channel to, to the company, you know, you're not going to know what this is. This could be some generic no-name brand movement. And that might dissuade somebody from pulling the trigger and buying this. Um, to the best that I can tell here, that this one here is going to be a Miyota. Um, and the reason I, I shake it like that is generally, uh, again, this company, now I could be totally off that and the company will clarify, but from what my experience with the company so far, when I ask what movements in it, it's either been the NH35, 36, 37s, or the Miotas, right? Uh, and so what I can tell, I can hear the rotor spinning. And so the Miyota movements, the mo most of the ones that they're using in watches actually uh, wind with the rotor in both directions, whereas the NH35 is more of like, it almost looks like something's wrong with it when that rotor's kind of slowly, kind of jaggedly turning. Uh, it's just how the movement's designed, right? And I don't, I'm not a watch guy, watch... Um, you know, mechanic or whatnot. I don't. I don't know why that is, but uh, I think the Miotas have like a ball bearing. Not saying the NH doesn't, but um, they just the rotor spins differently. You can usually hear these spinning away. You know, they just constantly spin in every direction. So uh, if it, you are picky, and let's <laughs> believe it or not, there are folks who are like, oh, I don't like this movement because I can hear it. You will hear the rotor turning on this. You won't hear it on camera, but like when I get up and move around in the middle of the night, I can hear it kind of spinning in there. That, that, that not, little nonsense like that doesn't bother me in the slightest. So if that is a concern to you, you know, it may not be the watch for you, but um, you're getting a branded, high quality, reputable name Miyota movement in this, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, stainless steel, they don't list 316, but from what I can tell, this is 316 stainless steel. All their other watches that I've seen is 316L. I feel confident telling you that. 50 millimeter case diameter, nice big wrist presence, 16 millimeters in case thickness, uh, not too big, not too small. Again, it's subjective on what we consider thick and not, uh, but I would like to have seen this to really kind of set it off be thicker, you know, but it's still a fantastic looking watch. Um, I love the face on this. It's, it's like it's unlike anything that I have in my collection. You do have a sapphire lens with anti-reflective coating. 
that's a checkbox for many people. For me, it's not. I don't really care what the crystal's made out of, as long as it's like some sort of, you know, um, uh, you know, some sort of crystal, right? Not like an acrylic. But again, remember, when it comes to crystals, sapphire is going to be your most scratch resistant. When you start getting towards acrylics, they become more shatter resistant. So harder, the harder a crystal is, the more shatter prone it is. The softer it is, the more shatter resistant it is. Same thing with the hardness. The more hard it is, like the sapphire, more scratch resistant, and vice versa. You know, if it's acrylic, less scratch resistant. I've never scratched any watches. I, that's why it's not a checkbox for me. Uh, but it is for a lot of people. The band that comes on this is a silicone strap, which I'm going to show you in a second, and water resistance to 100 ATM. So let me show you the strap. Uh, now, I'm sorry, it's not on this strap anymore, uh, but it is your standard silicone strap. I would say the strap is really nothing uh, over the top. It's not like an isoframe or anything like that. Um, it's a standard strap, and it's used on a lot of their watches that use a silicone strap. Um, <clears throat> I believe the RGMT watches come with something extremely similar. Uh, and this gives you an idea of what it looks like. If you go to the website, you'll see what this looks like on the strap. Let's face it, guys, common sense, we've seen a million silicone straps. Hence the reason why I wanted to change it up. Now, what do I always say about black watches? You need something to make it pop. With this watch, what I like about it is that it's very clean, but you have this face on it that's like this iridescent almost, which I'm using the wrong word for, it, but there is like sort of like a reflective quality, a metallic quality uh, to what, what appears to be like, you know, the ocean, like water. Uh, and it just, on this, it just has like this kind of like, almost like a pearlescence look, uh, almost like a 3D pearlescence look where it just doesn't look like a flat waves on there. Very cool. You have the Nubeo logo. And I like that on this particular model, the indices are done in just like a, a very kind of subdued matte black, very tactical. Then of course you have those same numbers around the bezel. It is unidirectional rotating. Uh, and of course, just a little bit of orange on the second. Uh, okay, silicone strap. Now, uh, I think I was on the orange indices, so, or the orange hands. So you have a little bit of orange on the, uh, the second hand. And of course that thousand meters of water resistance letting you know, bam, right there with that bright orange color. I love it. I think it's a great looking watch. And what, I've, what do I always say about black watches? You know, you need something to really make it pop. No disrespect to my, uh, my Delta T watch, my Umi. Um, I ordered that in all black when that company was nice enough to collaborate as well. But I ordered it in the black and it just is a boring watch. There's nothing going on with it. It's a watch that, it's so boring that I don't even, I don't even wear it when I, I want to wear a watch that I don't even really, uh, care about so much. Hang on, let me log back in here, guys. All right, there we go. Uh, so you need to have something on the watch when it's black, in my opinion, to really make it pop. The face on this is absolutely incredible. Uh, beautiful watch. Now, this is something I might eventually throw on, maybe like a uh, Ally Express Jubilee bracelet. As much as I appreciate the silicone and, and the comfort in silicone, uh, you guys know with me, um, comfort, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me. Nothing I wear bothers my wrist at all. So I'm more of a, a uh, standard bracelet kind of guy. Now, uh, why did I put this on this strap? So I've had this strap forever, and I forget who actually made this strap for me. Uh, this came out of Kind of some custom strap maker. Uh, we collaborated years ago and is a 20, I believe this one's a 24 millimeter uh, lug width. So I didn't have anything to put this on. Let's face it, Invictus are a lot larger. Aragons are pretty big. Most companies uh, on micro brands are using about 22 millimeter. 24 is kind of the oddball size. So this has, I believe it's a 24 millimeter uh, lug to lug. And again, if you are confused on that or you're, you need to know for sure, just drop me a comment. I'll get you an exact measurement. But uh, it works perfectly on this watch. And I love how the orange and red just kind of blend together. From first glance, you might think that that was red on there. Uh, the uh, Nubeo buckle fit perfectly on this. And I think that this really set the watch off. Uh, you know, I've been wanting to have something in red and black for quite some time. And this was the perfect watch that finally came along for this uh, awesome strap. Now, I think this is horn back alligator. I'm not 100% sure, but it is genuine. Uh, and I'm sorry, I wish I could remember which company uh, sent me this, but I will uh, put a link in the description for this strap if I can find it. Uh, but it is absolutely killer. And finally, um, I got one to fit this. Now, I also have a beautiful Python strap that goes on this. And I think this is the perfect watch that if you want to start rocking it with some exotic looking straps, whether it be alligator, snake, uh, another strap that I do have uh, on my mind for this, I'll probably throw this on uh, a black Stingray. And that's just really going to make it pop. You'll have that beautiful 
black kind of you know um, oceanic face which really I mean makes that face come alive and then having that black stingray will just really make this watch look fantastic. Um, I think that's something that this watch should have came with is black stingray. It would have really taken that whole ocean theme to the next level. Now let's get back to Ventana. So when I look at this watch, great, it's ocean theme, but there's nothing, if I go, and I'm gonna go with you guys right here, over to, let me just see, Ventana, Ventana uh, vehicle. Mm, let's see, Ventana dive vehicle. Let me see what gets pulled up here. So. And I encourage you to check this out. You know, I think anytime we're looking at watches, it's pretty cool to research the theme a little bit. And here's the vehicle. Now, when I look at this, I see two different variations. I see, uh, I guess the, the shell of this is like a bright orange. Uh, and then, of course, I see there's a yellow variation. But all the pictures, most of the pictures that I see on here are, are with that diver's orange with blue, uh, blue writing, blue Ventana logo. Again, this is where I want to see the theme. I think that it's great to have these color choices. That's wonderful. But it would have been really cool if this watch, no matter what color you got, was marketed with an orange strap with some kind of blue, um, you know, blue logos. Or that they that, that at least on one of these models, they integrated that color theme, that orange and blue, into this watch. This way you can you when you look at it, you can be like, oh, I see where the inspiration came from, right? I see where they're taking that vehicle. <clears throat> and putting it into this watch somehow, even with something as simple as the color. Now, there's not a lot you can really do uh, as far as, you know, uh, as far as really putting this particular vehicle or th making this, I guess, watch more themed after the vehicle. Because when you look at it, you'll see it's, it's more looks like a, just a giant motor. Um, it's not really something you would think... When, when I first say, oh, Ventana Space Exploration Vehicle, uh, this is not what came to mind when I, when I um, pictured this, right? So it's, it's kind of a tough thing to theme a watch around. I think really the only thing you could do here, uh, because it is very, and you'll see when you click the link, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to this vehicle as well, probably from Wikipedia, but you'll see it's pretty hard to theme a watch around that. So other than the name, there's nothing that really ties this watch to that vehicle and I think that uh, just and, and this is why you know I like to do reviews and give you give companies honest information this is why it should be fantastic to actually kind of think a little more about the theme and, and at the bare minimum you know if a company if a brand has a color choice or a color um, uh, theme right but there's certain uh, brand colors right in this case it's blue and orange uh, I think they it, it would have been better to integrate those colors into this watch even as much as I like the black even if they didn't have this as an option, do an orange case, blue bezel, uh, even doing like a you know a combination blue and orange bezel with a black face. Not sure, but but that color needs to be tied into this watch. Sure, you can go ahead and you know put an orange strap on it. I do like that they have the orange hands. That does kind of point towards this vehicle a little bit more. But let me check the other color combinations here. When I look at the other colors, on the red version, they did use the blue on the uh, end of the second hand. On the green version, they used the orange. So I do, I can see that they use that color on these watches because of the vehicle, but I think we need more, you know. Uh, orange and blue is a fantastic color combination on a bezel. You could do a half blue and, you know, orange face, half blue and orange bezel. That would have just tied this watch completely to the Ventana. But putting my small gripe aside, this is a killer watch. The quality's there, uh, absolutely awesome looking. It kind of reminds me of like, almost like a Seiko Tuna. Very cool, I love it. It's got the helium release valve. And again, you might have, you know, preferred, you know, you guys might have preferred to see it on the black silicone. Uh, for me, I need to, something to little dress it up a little bit. I'm wearing this one for three days. Absolutely love it on the strap. And I will re-review this watch at a later date when I get my hands on a black Stingray strap. It's really gonna take this watch to the next level. That's just my personal thing. You know, when I have a black watch, I wanna see something that just kinda really sets it apart a little bit. But I do think of the three color choices, this was the coolest one. And I encourage you guys to check it out. So let me go ahead and throw in the wrist, show you what it looks like I've got my size, my height, and my weight. I'm about five foot seven and a half. I weigh about 184 pounds as of today. And I have a seven inch wrist. So this one looks like a guy my size, my height, and my weight. Uh, just an awesome watch. If you are a Seiko Tuna fan, 
you really like the design on this. It's 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 awesome. And to me, for me, I think it's you know I like it more uh, than that design. I love how they've done the bezel on it. I love um, again. I love that that face. I mean, when you think when you go looking at a lot of micro brands, go look at a lot of mainstream brands. Um, I don't see anybody with a face that looks like that. I mean, that is absolutely. Uh, stunning. Uh, surprisingly, it didn't do a blue version. I think that this would have been killer in the blue as well, but you never know. Uh, I'll tell you right now, this company, I reviewed two of their Ohio brands, uh, Ohio watches under the RGMT line. They all of a sudden snuck in that yellow, which is like the Doxa yellow. I was like, man, <laughs> I just saw this. I know you already sent me two of the other colors, but... I need it, and so my, my man over at the company went ahead and sent me that. Um, that video, I think, will release, I think, this Sunday. Ah, it, you'll, you guys will see it. So, uh, Also, if you're curious, I get a lot of comments from people who are like, oh, we need to review this. I'm like, I already did. They can't find it. I am creating some playlists, so make sure you check out my main page on YouTube, Fat Cat Collections. Check out the playlist, whatever watch you're looking for. Generally, uh, unless if I review more than one, it has a playlist. You can bookmark that and come back and, and reference uh, those. You will see Nubeo. I'll have a couple playlists. I'll have Nubeo, RGMT, Ballast, and then, of course, I'll have one that's Dartmouth Brands with all their brands under one playlist. So pretty cool. Check out everything they got. This is definitely one for the collection. I got to tell you, I gave props to one of my subscribers, uh, Steve. He, uh, ever since he saw my Nubeo review, the first one, the Puhu Hanu, I think it's called. Um, he he went out and got one, and he is addicted to this brand now. So it's really nice to hear from people who actually watch these videos, uh, trust my assessment on these watches, and then decide, hey, I'm going to get one of these, and uh, they get it. And again, just like Invicta, you know, it's like you give the brand a chance, and if you like Invicta, you like Aragon, you like Bulva, you like the quality of those watches, you will absolutely love Nubeo. It's got it. There, there's there's they're incredible, incredible watches. And I really look forward to featuring more of their brands. Uh, so, I will tell you, stay tuned for next week. We're going to be reviewing the other Nubeo watch they sent me. Not going to tell you which one. You'll just have to wait and see. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Do click the bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video or post anything or an update. Uh, remember, even though these brands, this is not an Invicta brand, uh, remember I do have a pretty, pretty popular group, Invicta Addiction. Um, I'm always posting new Bayo stuff on there too, RGMT. Any watch I get, I post in there just because it's an Evicta addiction. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you have other brand watches you like, even, even a Rolex, feel free to post a wrist shot. We love the wrist shots. It's all about sharing this fun hobby of watch collecting. As long as you're kind and respectful uh, of other people's choice and taste, you're more than welcome. So stay tuned for more, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and take care.